party which espouses small government would want to unleash a massive law enforcement effort, including perhaps National Guard and others, to go and literally pull people out of their homes and their workplaces, round them up, put them, I don't know, in buses, boxcars, in order to take them across our border. I just find that not only absurd, but appalling. Uh, you stay classy, Mrs. Clinton. The former first lady and former secretary of state, now Democrat presidential candidate in Minneapolis today, making a not so veiled reference to Republicans comparing the GOP to the Third Reich, saying it's the plan of Republicans to send away illegal immigrants in boxcars. With Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth back with you on Newsmax Prime. Miranda, as this immigration debate continues, a federal judge in California has confirmed a decision made last month which will allow illegal juveniles currently held in detention to be released. Yeah, J.D., the judge is giving the Department of Homeland Security until October 23rd to comply, citing a 1997 settlement for their release, which states minors cannot be held more than 72 hours unless they post a flight risk or a danger to the community. For more, let's welcome in Dan Stein. He is the president of the Federation for American Immigration Reform, or FAIR. He joins us from Newsmax, Washington. Dan, welcome back to Newsmax Prime. And before we go any further, Dan, I'd like to get your reaction to what Mrs. Clinton had to say. Listen, that's an analogy to the Holocaust, and that's offensive. It's offensive to all Americans that somebody would make such an irresponsible statement to inject unneeded incendiary emotion into what should be a very constructive and delicate national immigration dialogue. And look, I'm not here to endorse any presidential candidate, but as a practical matter, when the rhetoric gets so heated that it seems to designed to inflame and incite hatred and incendiary response, I think she owes the American people an apology. And I want to go back to those illegal immigrants. Up to 2,000 illegal immigrants will be released back into the U.S. as a result of that federal ruling. Some are concerned that this could somehow set a precedent and that this decision could eliminate the government's ability to deport families under any circumstance. Your thoughts? It's very important to understand that the judge in this, the Obama-appointed federal judge in this case, Dolly G is hostile to all forms of detention, even if they're used to deter an emergency inflow. And as we see all across the country, all across Europe, people are pouring in illegally, uh, trying by any means necessary to get into Europe. We know that we face at some level the same problem here on our southern border. For a federal judge to declare, based on an old settlement that needs to be renegotiated, that the federal government loses its basic deterrence capability to detain people in order to not only make sure they show up for their hearings, but also to discourage others from coming in the future is a vi basically a, a violation of public trust and a threat to national security. The, the administration, we know this administration doesn't have a lot of tricks in their bag in terms of ensuring people show up and getting people out of the country quickly. So they know that once they're released, they know that they're unlikely to show up for their hearing and this process will take years and years anyway. And, and the president had sworn and he said, for those people who show up more recently, they're gonna be detained and they're gonna have their hearings and then they're gonna be sent back. So if this judge is successful, and I hope they appeal this, it's the Ninth Circuit of course, but I hope they appeal this, but if, he, if she's successful, then obviously we're just gonna see people pouring in and pouring in and they're just gonna be given uh, you know, appointment dates years later and effectively we've got total immigration anarchy. So in I mean, other words- That underscores yeah, the volatility, the, uh, just the volatility me, of this whole debate. And, and let me just underscore and what something- what Hillary Clinton said. Yeah, let me, is, let me, is, I mean, it, it, it highlights how there's a division now growing in this country philosophically, where you have one party that's split with business interests and the Republicans, but the Democrats have now gone all in for the idea that immigration should be unlimited and not controlled. And based on the ruling, in essence, has this judge just basically said to the parents of illegal kids south of our border, you all come and you better get here while the getting's good. Yeah, oh no, this is actually an emergency situation. It's a crisis. Even the Obama administration is concerned about it. And that tells you 
that we have this thin green line along the southern border and this judge who we all know has an ideological bent based on her history, Dolly G, Central District, Federal District in California. You look at her past, you look at her background, and she's obviously not impartial. And, you know, this decision was negotiated, this settlement they, call, they talk about was negotiated in the Clinton administration. And it requires the kind of procedural process that makes it very difficult for any country to sustain border controls when you have an uncontrolled in-migration situation from overseas. And with about 40 seconds remaining, uh, we want to talk about another story. The U.S. Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that people living in the U.S. illegally have a constitutional right to bear arms. How is this possible? Well, of course, it's not possible. A person doesn't have a right to be in the country. They don't have a right to, to the identification required to get uh, uh, arms. And why would you want to have a little small army of illegal aliens buying guns and trying to occupy part of the southern United States? The whole thing is ludicrous and absurd because in this, the same court said that the alien wasn't allowed to have a, a gun because of a federal statute that overrode that alien's constitutional right to have a firearm. But see, the advocates who want to promote illegal immigration are saying, oh, this is great because we already have the Fourth and the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendment that protect illegal aliens. Now we can argue if an alien has a right to buy a gun, even if they're here illegally, then they have a right to get the driver's license to buy the gun, right? And they have the right to buy the bullets and everything else. And so it grows one more, they call it the camel's nose in the tent. And again, obviously this is going to get appealed because you know, it was, I think that comment was dicta. I don't know that the judge re really thought that through, but it's going to have to be appealed. And it's amazing it's to not, see an it's expansion. It's not consistent of, with the other circuits. To say the least. Uh, Dan Stein, we very much appreciate uh, your thoughts on what Mrs. Clinton had to say, on what Judge G did, and what awaits us in terms of immigration policy. There's more ahead, so stay tuned.